Hello. All right, you're going to start it with Lewis. We'll go to Mark Weiser, then Jake Rowe. Hey, Lewis, how are you? How you doing? Uh, hey, how did um, – you guys have kind of had, a you know, different bodies uh, playing at safety. How did Latavius do the other day when uh, when Christopher, uh, you know, came out? Um, I think Brittany answered the call well, of course. Um, he made some good plays. He was playing fast. He was playing physical. Um, but the thing is um, – he prepared well in practice, and you know, and it showed in the games. Hey, Lewis. Uh, concerning the the defense and and coming out and playing like you guys did against Missouri, was you know Larry Roundtree was I guess on a little bit of a roll there. Was there a? I know there's a focused effort on stopping the run every week, but did you guys kind of take that to heart, knowing that he had had a few really good games in a row, that he was the centerpiece of their offense, and you kind of knew you had to stop him to, to, to do what you wanted to do defensively? Um, yeah, I mean, they have a good running game going and um, from their past games, and, and he's been, you know, a key point of their team. And of course, we, you know, put him in, in a thought of, all right, we got to stop the run, you know, run is something they really do well and um we did that well and at the end of the day I don't know how much they ended with when it comes to rushing yards but we're really happy with what we did on stopping the run next we'll go to Chip Towers and Anthony Dasher Lewis you're still a relatively young player uh Monty Rice is an old vet he he just got uh, nominated as a Buckus Award finalist this week. What what's your observations of, of of him as a football player and you know I, you know an X and I O guy in there in the middle of the defense? I'll give you both football player and then off the field. Monty is a amazing person off the field and on the field he's an amazing leader. Um, he's you know lead by example. His effort is amazing. Um, he's one of those guys you know I look up to in the way he carries himself on the field. Um, grinds on the field, play by play by play by play. He's going to give you his 100%. And frankly, he deserves that award. And um, hopefully it goes his way. And off the field, you know, he just carries himself right. He doesn't get in trouble. He does what he's supposed to do. And he does things right. Hey, Lewis, good to see you. Um, one of the guys you in your signing class, DeJuan Mathis, announced today that he's going to transfer to Temple. Just kind of wonder if you could just kind of, you know, I know you're friends with him and all that, kind of reflect on his time here. And what kind of fit you think he'll be with the Owls? Um, you know, it was unfortunate he had to transfer, but I hope everything goes well for Dewan at Temple. But Dewan's an amazing player. You know, he's very athletic, um, very smart guy. And um, I know that his time here was quite short, but um, I feel Dewan will do amazing things at Temple. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Seth Emerson, then Brandon Sudge. Brandon, I'm just curious. I know it's hard to kind of sum this up on a Zoom and a minute or whatever, but what has this year been like for a college football player like you, uh, like have, being kind of bubbled up, trying to get through a college football season? You're still here mid-December, still playing after all the uncertainty. What – What's the? How would you describe what this year has been like for a college football player? Like mm, it's been very odd and weird, of course, um, because you know, the goal is for us. We, it's supposed to be um, we play week to week to week, and sometimes games get gotten canceled on us. And the thing with that is, you know, pushes the season further and further and further out. And um, of course, that's you know that's not something we want, but you gotta. Um, adapt to that you know you got to adapt to COVID you got to adapt to um, guys you know catching COVID and guys having to sit out or missing guys to injuries and all that everything has um, comes into that but you know if the season's just been strange in ways you know I can't I can't speak of. Has it been like just all football basically you're avoiding parties you're avoiding social gatherings? Um, the thing with me, I already said this in the beginning, this year was very important to me because there was, um, you know, introduction to Lewis scene type thing. And I had to play my cards, I had to play everything careful. And I go out. If it's not practice, it's not games, I stay in. Hey, uh, Lewis, I mean, can you try to um, put yourself in, like, in the shoes and say, like, if you were a – high school prospect right now trying to figure out which school you wanted to go to. Um, how difficult would that be to do it 
strictly over a video call, not being able to go in person anywhere. Can you imagine being in that uh, situation? Um, I would say it's very hard for a recruit because I would say um, taking trips and traveling and being able to be around coaches, around players was something that made a big impact of me at the end knowing what school I wanted to go to. I don't feel like um, – talking on Zoom or talking on a video call, you really get the feel for anything because you're not getting a feel for anything. You're just talking on the phone, you know? You don't, you're not around the environment of the players, the environment of the coaches. You're not getting a vibe for the school. So that makes it hard on guys picking schools. I mean, did they pick the school that's right for them? Who knows? I mean, is it going to work out well? Who knows? But it's just something you just got to deal with. Palmer Toms and then Connor Riley. Yeah, Lewis, you said this was the introduction to Lewis' senior year. Um, you know, how would you judge your, your first year, your introduction? And, uh, you know, where do you think you still have to improve? Obviously, there's still football left to be played, but where do you think you can still grow? Um, could you repeat that question, that, that last part? Percent? Yeah, you know, obviously, there's still football left to be played, um, you know, in, in your introduction year. But how, where do you think you still have to grow as a football player? Um, I, of course, I have a lot of places to grow. Um, I, I say that I have to be a student of the game in ways of um, I play I play fast, of course, but I could play faster. You know, um, I could see things faster. I could do things, see things before they happen way faster. I feel like that's really important being a student of the game. And you know, if I have to stay and live in the film room or live in you know, where they're watching film, I'm going to do that in the offseason. I have to run more, to be more explosive, to if I got to lift more in the offseason, I'm going to do that. You know, I just got to do more it's just so next season I can, you know, be the type of player that I see myself being and dream, think about in my head. But um, I feel like this year I, I've done a, a lot of good things considering the fact of, you know, the type of moment we're going through with COVID and everything. And, you know, I just answer the bell for my team. That's all. Uh, hey, Lewis, when you were going through the recruiting process a few years ago, uh, Mel Tucker was going to be your position coach, and he was Georgia's defensive coordinator, and then he gets hired to be the head coach at Colorado. When that happened, you were committed to Georgia, but how did that sort of coaching changes, how did that impact your recruitment? And as a former recruit, how, how, how much do you evaluate coaches versus the actual institution that you were going to, knowing that the coach might leave? Mm. Um, the thing with coaching is coaches leave, come and go. I mean, it's a definite thing. It's no question about it. Um, yeah, Mel Tucker left. I mean, you know, that's what a lot of coaches are going to do. You know, they want to upgrade to another level of coaching or get a different opportunity. And the fact that Mel Tucker did that for himself, you know, it's awesome. And, you know, he's still coaching at Michigan State. Um, but with me, it's, you know, it was more than just a coach, you know. Um, it was me more than just a coach. I fell in love with, you know, what Georgia had to offer me and educational wise and football, of course, but Mel was not just the all, you know, I didn't just build a relationship with Mel. I built a relationship with almost all the coaches with, with being Kirby with all the other coaches. So that, that, that's what happened with me.